Okay, Driving Basics 18. Um, this is one that's actually, I, I literally don't remember the last time I saw or heard someone do this. It's a bit like Driving Basics, I think it was four, where I talked about if you can't see it, a giveaway, put the windows down so you can hear the traffic. I have to do that every day coming out of my driveway. And a lot of people commented saying, oh God, I never thought of doing that. And I never see anyone doing it. And then they wonder why their nose is creeping out. Suddenly they've got to react to me on the main road or I've got to react to them. So another one similar to that it has to do with your horn. Okay, now your horn, there's a number of rules you need to be aware of in residential areas, the timings that you can and can't use it. Um, it is illegal to use it while you're stationary. So if I was to press it now, it's actually breaking the law unless someone is about to crash into me. Um, it's not to be used in road rage, which so it's something that it should not, must not be used uh, to do. Uh, and everyone does it. Every, you know, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are doing it. Then you've got a couple of examples like I am going to show you now where actually you should be using the horn and no one's doing it. Let's go and have a look. So I'm now turning onto a country road. It's one I use uh, very often with the early days of my learners to get them used to just the very basics of driving. A country roads, if you're in an, in an area where you're from the city, so I, I taught a girl, I remember she came up from London. Um, she, she was living here now, driven in London her whole driving career. She was only a young girl, but suddenly just wasn't happy on these type of roads. Norfolk country roads etc so we went and did some work now this is only wide enough for one vehicle that's the first thing I note about this country road so I need to be looking for passing places and I need to be very aware of hazards if you look at the bins they're all full the handles are facing towards the road which means they've been pulled out they haven't yet been emptied so I need to anticipate a bin lorry potentially coming the other way this is where I'm going to be a bit clever and use the horn for its intended purpose. Can't see around that bend. It's only wide enough for one. And I'm listening as well. Now that isn't going to prevent everything happening. There could be people that have their music loud. There could be people that are hard of hearing. And if you've got your windows closed, often you might not hear that. Okay, but what I'm doing is just attempting to alert people of my presence. I'm doing it a little bit ways back from the bend. And the main reason for me is if I've got horse riders round that bend, I don't want to do it right on the bend and then scare the horses. So I'm doing it a little bit further back. Okay. Now, how many people do you see doing that and here doing that? I travel this road all the time. I travel roads similar all the time. And I don't think I've ever encountered anyone else doing that, but that is the intended purpose for your horn, okay? Now, the other scenario where I might use my horn is someone's reversing off a driveway, perhaps can't see me. And I actually want them to know that I'm coming. So I will use the horn to alert them of my presence and be very ready to, of course, respond if they just keep coming out. But I mean, there's going to be, there's videos I'll put on recent and uh, upcoming where people make mistakes around me and do silly things. And you'll note that not once do I start using the horn to let them know of my displeasure. It's not what it's designed for. Genuinely, and I mean this, and if you're one of these people that I think genuinely, if you use your horn because of a bit of road rage, I think you need to grow up. So I do consider when I'm doing this late at night or early in the morning, I have a lot of six o'clock lessons, zero six hundred with pupils that are happy to get up earlier. And we have to consider that when we're going past like people's houses, that actually we, we probably shouldn't use the horn to alert people of our presence. But here, it's daylight hours, it's absolutely fine. Look at that bend, I mean, it was, it's horrific. There's only, only room for one vehicle. And the speed at which people will come round that bend, I would like them to know that I'm here because I do not trust other people to keep me safe. I'm gonna keep myself safe.
at this point in the video if i can just ask you if you haven't seen me before to hit the like subscribe it really does help more than you know i really do want to help to um anyone that wants questions answered or wants videos made etc i'm all about just helping people and i help people of all different experiences in my day-to-day -day job so that's what i want to try and bring to youtube as well uh, there's plenty on the video there's driving basic series which is this one there's quizzes that i'm going to be running uh, and you can see if you know the answers there is driving lesson footage there's mock driving tests uh, there's instructional videos driving through there's loads okay there's, there's something for everyone so please do hit subscribe it really uh, it really means a lot when anyone does subscribe You're welcome The reason I stopped for those cyclists on that country road is just very simply a couple of rules. Rule one, H1 is one of my absolute favourite rules. It, sh it should have been just common sense, but it's been brought into the highway code as of couple, uh, 2021. Um, and it makes essentially blame and responsibility much clearer. Okay, so any situation where you have vulnerable road users, anyone more vulnerable than I am, I have the greatest responsibility in that situation to keep those people from harm. And that makes complete sense. And if you think it doesn't, again, grow up. Um, now, those cyclists, I, on a country road like that, I cannot give them the minimum clearance that's required. Under 30 miles an hour, one and a half meters, okay? If I can't give that clearance, I need to seriously reduce the risk. Now that's either I go very, very slow, or on a road like that, it's much easier to stop and just let the cyclist through. And it takes no time out of my day. It doesn't ruin anything at all. It was easy to do. And they say, thank you. And we carry on our day and everyone's happy. Everyone goes home safely. And that is the, again, the golden aim of driving that I wanna promote on this channel. In my area, there are just so many accidents, in, sorry, incidents. There's no such thing as an accident. Everything happens for a reason. 90% of incidents happen because of human error or the way our attitudes are shaping our driving, okay? And as I've said before, if everyone drove like me, there would be zero road deaths, okay? And that's the aim of this channel, is to just contribute any way I can to that zero road deaths. If I hit one person that understands with this video um, what I'm on about and decides to change something about what they're doing, that's part of the way towards zero road deaths. The unfortunate truth is there are people that will watch some of my videos and they give it a thumbs down and it's because their attitude, just they just think, nah, doesn't apply to me. I'm better than that. Oh, what a load of nonsense he's chatting. And you're never gonna change those people's minds. And every thumbs down I get, to be honest, I just think, well, it's someone that I can't help. Um, but if you want to be helped, here I am. You've found me. So that was Driving Basics 18, using the horn, what it's really designed for. Just an example of what you could be bringing into your driving, something I never see people do. And I'll see you for the next one.